Hello guys, I go by the name L A Y C O N and it's Connie Sir. See who is Le Con. Hmm. I am a god in a human body. No, you will never. So I know you must have listened to Who Is Le Con and you're enjoying it. If you want to read about reviews of those songs that you're enjoying, go to Boom Buzz. Yeah, after you're done listening to the songs on Boom Play, go to Boom Buzz and check out the reviews of Who Is Le Con. Thank you very much. Hey, wait. Go to Boom Play now, now, now. Yes. See how I wrote from. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, like that. don't be that person. Don't you worry might as well now. You write, write your own. You see what you would That's do. That's why I'm there. <laughs> so you went into the house with as little as four thousand streams on Boom Play. Oh, yes. it was four thousand. Yeah, it was four thousand. For Wiz Lecon. Yes. For oh, four thousand. Your whole discography. Okay, the, okay. Now you have about one point one million plays. I still small look. It's small, but for <laughs> but within three huge. months. <laughs> yeah, that is huge. It's huge. It's huge. That so is huge. how how did it come about? You know, the process of doing music and Big Brother. How did it start for you? Well, music has <laughs> my life now. Has always been my life. And Big Brother, I think I was always mentioning in the house that I don't watch this show. I don't watch Big Brother. I, I'm part of the people who watch it online. Um, I have favorite housemates in just one mm -hmm. Big Brother season. That who was that? last season. On my show, that was my favorite oh. housemate last season. And the reason was because uh, I was privileged to see some of his diary room clips on Twitter. So I kept that. This guy is always catching crews. Okay. This guy was out. So that. So when I saw the link, I was like, ah, Momo, you have an EPO. You mm -hmm. don't ex uh, kind of exhaust all the avenue to promote this EP. Mm -hmm. Like, so the only feasible one now where they have to they reach out to people individually. But this kind of big brother now, if you click this link and you go there, there's a high chance people will notice you and then you keep talking about your music that it will translate back into your streaming numbers and mm -hmm. your popularity as an artist. That was my whole purpose of going to Big Brother. So when I clicked on the link, I was like, it's just cruise. Anything that happens will happen. I didn't have anything to lose. Really. Yeah, sure. So when, <laughs> that was just it. That was why I went for Big Brother. Mm. That was where Big Brother came into the picture. So would you describe it as your strategy? Uh, is it a strategy really because i just went there for a purpose promote okay. yourself promote your music the only way i would know how to promote my music is by being myself because my i i feel like you can listen to my music and you'll be able to tell the kind of person i am not tell the kind of person i am when you see me because mm -hmm. me my music they, it may be different mm -hmm. It is always different for people when they see me and they say, you're not the one that sang this. They are not able to connect it. Well, so for me, I was going to be myself 100%. I would always be myself. Nothing is going to make me stop being myself. Yeah. But yeah, so that was the whole goal. I didn't go there with a strategy to do one thing or anything. I just went there to promote my music. Mm -hmm. And okay. I had a timeline of maybe two, three weeks. Oh, okay. So then did you ever think you were going to make it this far? This question is, is is a two-way question did you ever think you were going to make it this far and at some point in the house did you ever have an inkling that you were going to win no i didn't think i was going to even get to seventh week mm. okay it's because naturally now you be like ah, that's a huge thing some people go there to win to actually win it and so they set out their plan for everything they want to do everything they want to uh make sure that they achieve how they are going to act in the first week, second week, like they lay out that plan and like, but me, I just went there to promote my musical. So when I started getting to third, fourth, fourth week, I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing right or wrong, but I'm just going to keep promoting my music. So the more time I get to spend in this house, it's the more avenue for me to keep promoting my music and yeah. still also catch my crews, enjoy myself. Yeah. Before we, we started the interview, I asked you a question. I said, um, do you wake up every morning and tell yourself, this thing is actually true. I want this show. Yeah, I did. I did win the show. But what, I, what I'm always, you, you know, to be honest, in my head, it's more like your songs really, really popped. Yeah, mm. I want the Big Brother show. And it's just, 
my head, I'm just so, so happy that my songs, yeah, like, like people recognize my music, people know my music, and people are actually getting the message that I'm trying to use the music to pass. That means a whole lot. That means a whole lot. Like when you see me sing about something, you do know that that thing is just a means to an end. And the end, people are actually seeing that this is the end goal of this guy. That means a whole lot to me. Like when people can connect your music and connect it to the purpose why you're actually making music. Mm. That, that, that's a huge thing for me. So Big Brother, I want Big Brother and I'm very, very grateful for the votes. I'm very happy that people actually saw me and they felt like this guy deserved to win and we're going to make sure that he wins it. Mm -hmm. And in the same sense, I'm also so, so happy that people see my music. So it's like two things for me. Yeah. I want Big Brother mm -hmm. and my music. And that's, it's unexplainable, honest. Mm -hmm. The feeling is unexplainable. Okay, let's talk about Fierce, the song. You did it with the uh, Reminis and Chinko. Chinko. What went into producing that song? And when did you produce it? How? Uh, first was produced by Q. Beats okay. by Q. It was the same guy that produced You Know Me, Who? Gang. Gang. Yeah. Uh, I had recorded four songs with him that night. Yeah, 12 to 12. 12 to 12 session. 12 in the afternoon till 12 in the midnight. I was tired. He was exhausted. And I said, oh, let's do rap. Let's do just one trap, Afro trap song. Yeah. And he said, okay, started making the beats. I left him, I went to sleep, I came back, he was done with the beats. Uh, the first line that came to my head was Shuri and Kwebai. And that was how we made the song. That was the last song we made that day. I was tired, he was exhausted. I just flexed the song. And yeah, I wrote five verses for the song. Mm -hmm. Five different verses. Cause I didn't know at that time that I was going to feature people on the song. So I wrote five verses and I picked two that I used. Then moving forward, we decided to feature people on the song. Okay. Um, we know that music is next for you, but then your, I'm sure your fans are really, really, really hungry. They want to know when exactly the next body of work is coming out. So when is it out? The next body of work. Or the next single. The next single. Okay, well, uh, right now I feel like I'm, I've started working. I started recording, obviously. And the truth is, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the type that would. My conscience will not even allow me to put out something that is not dope. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to keep working. I'm going to keep working, because the truth is, you guys want new music. You guys are going to get new quality music. Mm, you like heard music that. that would you would be proud to to tell your friends to go and listen to. Mm. That's the kind of music that I would make. And so, I'm not going to put a timeline on it. What I should know is the next things, the next music activity you'll be seeing from Lacon are going to be wonderful and quality ones. Mm. Like the, I don't know it's, if it's already out, but Neptune's Nobody Remix, that one is there. Then hip hop video, we're going to be, we're going to be shooting hip hop video. So it's good. It's going to be coming out. Those are the two things that are coming out right now. But obviously, we have a whole lot of things that I'm working on. Yeah. So if you separate Lacon from music, who exactly are you? Lacon is his music now. <laughs> I explained I, I explained exactly who I was on the first track on Who is Lacon EP. Yeah. The title of the EP is Who is Lacon. The title of the track is Who is Lacon. Yeah. So when you listen to Who is Lacon, you kind of get an idea of who I am mm. from the song. At some point in the house, you were able to actually connect with every single person. For people who watched the show, they knew that you had, you know, something with everyone. You had conversations with everyone. How were you able to do that? Because I know that there are some housemates that didn't probably have conversations with, you know, every other person. How were you able to, you know, do that? Oh, well, because when I went into the house, I had one thing in my head. And that thing is, you have to be yourself. And the kind of person I am is the kind of person that is open to always talking to everybody. Like you have to talk to people. You have to understand people for what they believe and their ideology. In this life that we are, it's a liberal world where you are allowed to have your thoughts and you're allowed to express yourself. And you have to just understand that everybody cannot have the same line of thoughts. And because his line of thought or your line of thought is different from mine, doesn't mean you know get sense. I just gas reason I'm the same way they reason I'm. I just have to see it from your perspective to be able to understand it. 
And even though it still doesn't make sense, it's your perspective because your perspective comes from all the experiences that you've had. So when I say, what do you they talk? Abstract. If it's abstract conversation and I say what you're saying doesn't make sense, that means I'm trying to tell you that wherever your thought process don't come from, no makes sense. And it's wrong. So that's, you just have to be able to understand that you have to tolerate people for who they are, accept them for who they are. What they're saying may be nonsense, but you have to still respect it. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Mm -hmm. Because if you have your opinion and I have my opinion, your opinion is yours. I won't try to enforce mine in, on yours. It doesn't still mean I'm going to accept yours. But I'm just going to leave it as yours. I'm not. That's, that's just the, I feel like that's the kind of uh, mindset that I had that allowed me to mm. talk to everybody in the house and able to at least learn a thing or two from everybody. Because I did learn a, two, a thing or two from everybody mm -hmm. in the house. Okay, so which artists are you actually looking forward to working with in the industry right now? Because right now, yeah, <laughs> the biggest thing right now in the, in the music industry. So which artists are you looking to collaborate with? And, or are people already reaching out? Yeah, well, like I said, we're working. Mm -hmm. Working. Uh, for the artists that I'm looking forward to work with, I've always been answering the same thing this way because it is the truth <laughs> for my mind. I love see any uh, there's no artist you call that i won't feel like there's a particular quality that this particular person has that every one of the rest of us don't have okay. so i'm open to working with everybody you're that trying I to be careful from. here i'm not trying to be careful i'm just being truthful the truth is i learn from everybody do you saw me in the house i was singing random songs when they played fuji i was singing fuji wasn't i mm. when they played Apala, i was singing Apala. when they played funk i was I, so that's the kind of person i have been listening to different type of artists i feel like yes there's there comes a time when you feel like you can actually work with anybody because yeah. of your diversity Okay, so I'll, I'll just take you back into the house at some point. During the whole thing with Erica, you maintained a, you know, you, you were calm for close to an hour. What exactly did you see that made you really calm? Because it's not everybody, like a new now, I mean, I know that if somebody talks to you like that, new, you know, flare up, but you were calm, you know. So what made you that calm? Normally, I would always be calm. I, I can't argue, I can't shout. It's not going to get me anything mm -hmm. uh, but at that point self i wasn't everything that was going on wasn't in my head i was just concerned about v v needed to eat so she could take her drugs yes okay. you remember if you go if you go watch the clip again i was sitting beside her she was eating that was my food i went to microwave for her to make sure that she ate so she'd take her drugs that was the whole thing that was in my mind i heard everything i i digested everything but still i would not even if i wasn't distracted not not like i was even distracted i just placed my mind where i felt was important at that point and the importance for me that night was after the party they should eat and take her drugs mm -hmm. that was what was important so i felt like yeah i still be calm regardless but because i don't uh, that's just my kind of person what you're saying is what you believe but it doesn't have to be I'm going to control how we react and I will never react in a way that will make you feel like you have you have the power to control my emotions with whatever it is you're saying. Mm. Okay. Have you and Erica spoken? I haven't had time. I haven't had time. But my, my friends, the people that I knew before I left the house, I haven't even spoken to them. Mm. So But is there gonna be like a meet and greet? Because I know you, Lekon. I know I was able to study your person in the house, except I may be wrong. You know, I know that when you genuinely, you know, like somebody, I'm not even talking about relationship. Like, yeah, like if I know, just see you as a person. Yes. That's... So is there going to be a, a meet and greet, you know, just to settle things and me KB? I feel like I'm not mad, first of all. I'm not even angry at, about anything. So there's really nothing to settle for me. There's really nothing to settle, honestly. I am, I'm not mad. I'm not vexed about anything. I don't have any ill feelings towards anybody in the house mm -hmm. so there's nothing to settle there's nothing to apologize for there's nothing for that's basically that's it for me mm. and kidwaya you the, the night erica was i'm oh, sorry the day erica was disqualified you and eric um, kidwaya became close and i was like wait what guys i don't think we've been close we've been close no, before not that then. close yeah not that close because mm -hmm. it was yeah but we, we were talking, ah, kid, why is my gene? Ah, 
since we I don't know. Me and that guy have been catching our crews since whenever I can remember. Because mm -hmm. Kid Wire reminds me of my cousin. Okay. He's the way he acts, the way he talks, his demeanor towards things. He reminds me of my cousin. He's like very... He knows that a lot of things are not meant to be taken so seriously. So he's my G. He has always been my G. He's still my G. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Lekon, for having us.